All right, so I got a lot of games, and I mean a lot of games. I recently made it over the 100 mark about a month ago, and I'm very happy with my collection. The unfortunate part, however, is that I can't record most of these. Internal capture cards weren't introduced until the 8th generation with the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Switch, so pretty much everything from the Wii U back still needs an external capture card in order to record gameplay. Plus, those internal cards in those 8th gen systems aren't the best quality. So, an external capture card always seemed worthwhile to me, and I finally bought one. However, I don't think that you guys will be able to tell what the hell this actually is. But, before I actually talk about the card, first things first. I don't know a damn thing about the ins and outs of capture cards. Despite researching constantly for years and watching Epos Vox almost every day, I don't really know all that much. I'm more of a hardware guy as opposed to software, but even then, I'm still clueless as shit. Pretty much, when I talk about this card, this is coming from the perspective of a general user and not an expert. Okay? Don't burn me in the comment section if I get something wrong. The summer heat is already doing that 24-7. Alright, so you guys want to hear about this capture card? You may even be guessing what brand it is. Elgato, Avermedia, Hapog. Well, luckily for you guys, it's none of those. <laughs> Today we're looking at the Blue AVS Audio Video Capture Cards HDMI to USB 1080p USB 2.0 Record via DSLR Camcorder Action Cam. That name scares me! This capture card comes from the company Blue AVS and is basically the Elgato Cam Link, which serves the same function. It was primarily made for cameras to function as webcams. It takes one HDMI input and turns it into a USB output for a pretty alright price. However, the price of the cam link has shot up onto about $330, and that price pretty much defeats the purpose. At that point, you could just get a regular capture card. So this thing is supposed to be a cheaper solution. It's on Amazon for only $48. It had a rating of 4 out of 5 stars and mostly positive reviews. So I bought it. However, I immediately regretted my decision. First off, as of the recording of this video, there are now multiple other companies who have the exact same model for cheaper. Were they there when I was buying my own? Hell no. So now, if you are interested, I am specifically talking about the model from Blue ABS, not any of this other shit. I don't know if theirs works, I've just pretty much treat them as separate products even though they're basically the same damn thing. So yes, I'm talking about this one and just be wary of the other shit. Anyways, after actually buying the card, it ships from Shenzhen, China. And after I saw that, I pretty much considered this thing MIA. As someone who regularly imports games from good old Nihon, it takes from about 3 weeks to 3 months for things to come in. Sure, my delivery window was for the 9th of June, but I was also worried about having to go through customs. I've only ever bought games from Japan. I've never ordered from China and I've definitely never ordered tech, so I was really worried. But as you can hopefully tell by the upload date of this video, it arrived early. Like, really early. It only ended up taking three days for this card to arrive, which is great because I'm a very impatient man. Blue ABS also emailed me explaining that the product has a year-long warranty. If that is true, that's pretty damn cool. But let's just hope that I don't actually have to use it. The card comes with a USB extension cord. Since this thing has to plug in directly into your PC, this big ass thumb drive isn't going to be compatible with everybody's setup, especially if you don't like lots of hanging wires. So the addition of an extension cable is pretty neat. I also suggest buying an HDMI extension cord as well. I never liked the idea of constantly unplugging things from my expensive hardware. I like to have something set up and leave it that way. But since that really isn't a choice with this card, I suggest just using a cheap extension cord like the one I got from Amazon Basics. So after getting it plugged in and testing it for about 4 days, I have to say it, this thing definitely does the job. The blue AVS card inputs up to 4K at 30fps, and only outputs 1080p at 30fps. So, not the best, but that's pretty much the base standard for resolution nowadays. I would have at least liked 900p at 60 frames per second, but I've been outputting super compressed 720p videos for as long as I can remember, so anything above that is an improvement for me. It works with all my consoles no issue, from my Switch to my PlayStation 3. I did not test my PlayStation TV or my GameCube, but there's no reason that it wouldn't work. And this is the coolest part about having a capture card. Consoles that don't have an easy record option can now be used just like all your current gen stuff. The only issue was that price of entry. The most popular graphics card is the Elgato HD60S and that's $180. And the company's previous model, the HD60, now goes for about $200 second hand. 
However, those are pre-COVID prices. Now, you can't even find them. And when you do, they're overpriced as hell. No, I don't know about you, but I didn't get a stimulus check. I'm still a working man and money's tight. So if I'm getting the capture card, I need it cheap. And yeah, there were some options. However, I had my own issues with those. Lots of these cheaper external cards are not going to have an actual USB cord to plug into your PC on top of the HDMI input and output. Most will just have the HDMI ports and a single USB host port, leaving the only way to actually record footage is through plugging in a thumb drive or an external hard drive and just pressing record. And I absolutely hate this. I don't know, maybe it's just my constant worrying, but the idea of not being able to actually see that my footage is working and actively recording freaks me out. So for me, these cards were a no-go, and the Blue AVS satisfied my knees without taking my wallet. But it did do some not pleasant things along the way. I've had this thing for about four or five days at this point, and I've constantly tested with multiple consoles and multiple games, and my results were very mixed. Right out of the gate, the biggest issue that a lot of people are going to have is that this thing does not output sound at all. I have no clue why, there's not a lot of reviews for this card, so I don't know if it's just my unit or if it's just something that this is lacking in general, but I do need to make it very clear. No matter what I did in settings or looked stuff up, this card just does not output sound at all. Now, some controllers allow you to play with headphones on, but besides that, you're pretty much screwed in the sound department, which is a big thing for those wanting to use this for Let's Plays or just any kind of gaming content. However, the biggest issue I have is the almost compressed look of the recordings. I have recorded in 720p, 1080p, I've even output to multiple file types, and they all have this look of just being a little too blown up. I can completely understand the Wii U and the PlayStation 3 as those don't always run at 1080p, but specifically the Switch at times just looks pixely. In Breath of the Wild, Link's hearts look like they're from the PlayStation 2 era. I get that this game runs at 900p, but still, it looks just a bit off. It doesn't look the worst, but it's enough, especially when playing the game, where it makes me question the true resolution. You can see when I compare the same footage of Marvel's Spider-Man from the PlayStation 4's internal capture card, which records at 720p, and the blue AVS, which is outputting at 1080. It looks slightly better, but it just, it looks like the footage is almost a 900p that's being upscaled to 1080. Initially, I thought it was all the damn extension cables, but after rummaging around on the internet, I found an answer on a forum that claimed that this would not affect the image quality. Again, I don't know the ins and outs of this stuff. If there is somebody out there who has the experience with this stuff, or can just explain to me that I'm an idiot, feel free to tell me down below. I initially thought that it was my computer, but I doubt it. However, that does bring me to my next issue, frame rate drops. They are not that bad, and I specifically had them on the Switch and the Wii U. And some of these are actually the fault of the console itself, as I could create it when just regularly playing on my TV. I especially had frame drops in Pokemon Let's Go, Smash Wii U, and Breath of the Wild. But the weirdest one by far was Pokemon Tournament DX Demo. If you watched my video on hunting down a Switch, which if you didn't, it's in the upper right corner, Pretty much all the gameplay is from me using this card, and at the end, the Pokémon DX demo just turns into a slideshow. I played both the Switch demo and the full game on the Wii U, and I just couldn't recreate this problem. Now this is where it probably really is my crappy PC, or it could be the card. Again, just relaying my experience to you. Just keep in mind that if you're going to get a capture card, you need a pretty nice graphics card, processor, and RAM if you're going to run and record games or even edit videos. If you can comfortably edit or stream, then you're probably fine. There's only one HDMI port, which is understandable. This was meant for a camera to be used as a webcam. That was its purpose. So to use multiple consoles, you'll just have to unplug and replug your HDMI cords, which would be fine if it didn't end up causing problems. Replacing the HDMI cord in this thing is stressful. If you switch out the cord while you're still in OBS, you'll have to open and close the software to allow the card to take in this new signal. And that's easy enough to understand. But after that, it's all a gamble. Sometimes the console boots up and everything's fine. And sometimes this happens. Luckily it fixed itself after one restart, but just heed my warning, buy an HDMI splitter. If you're okay with just completely playing your games at your desk, just buy a splitter. Again, constantly unplugging these cords freaks me out. And this whole black screen thing has happened to me on more than one occasion. 
It happened just right before recording this video, and oddly enough, it's the damn Switch again. It's easily fixable, but it's just probably best that you buy a splitter or just play one console at a time. And finally, on the first day I had this card, it got super hot after like only an hour of recording. So I let it rest and recorded more after a few hours. And in all of the days I've recorded using this, I have not felt heat coming from it like I did the first hour. None. Zip. Zilch. Nada. I should probably be scared, but eh, ignorance is bliss at this point. Alright, I'm sweating buckets and I'm super tired, so let's just wrap this all up. Should you buy this card? No! Hell no! If you have $50 and you're convinced that you need a capture card, then fine. Whatever. But, if you're able to wait and save up for a reasonably priced Elgato card, get one of those. Because that premium price isn't just for the name, but the quality control and customer service and all that jazz. The blue AVS would do the job, but... Okay, it's like if you buy a cheap aftermarket controller for your PlayStation 4 or whatever console. Will it do the job? Yeah. Is the real expensive one worth the money? Definitely. Will you probably have to buy another one after a little while? Most likely. So just buy nice or buy twice. And look, especially if you're making content for the PlayStation 4, Switch, or Xbox One and you're just starting out, the internal capture card will do the job. Yes, it's very short videos in regards to the Switch. Yes, some games can just be blocked from recording altogether. And the footage itself is only in 720p. Yes, transferring over footage from your console to your PC is a pain in the ass, but it's the way I've been making videos for the past four to five years. Yeah, this card's quality is a little better, but it's not that much to the point where you should just cheap out and buy this instead of saving up for a better one. Mine is working fine, but the bad does outweigh the good for this personally, especially now that there's other companies coming out with the same model that we don't know if it's the same quality or not. So when it comes to me, the moment I'm able to buy a better card, I will. And that's all I gotta say. Anyways, what did you guys think about this card? Do you have a cheap recommendation for me? Did I get something wrong? Tell me down below. It's super hot in here, and I'm gonna go play Let's Go with Pikachu in my bedroom. That's it for me. Night night!